There is no way that you're gonna tell me I'm gonna work my whole life. I'm gonna sit no, 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 behind a desk and work. I wanna have fun. Having my regular meltdown and realizing I'm never gonna escape capitalism. I'm a communist, you idiot. <laughs> hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be talking about the communists and also the anarchists, which is a cafe that recently went out of business but is now making a comeback and that's all very exciting. But before we begin, please make sure you are subscribed and have hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. So here is the original video. The Anarchist is a worker-owned, anti-capitalist, anti-colonial cafe, shop, and community space. Gabriel opened the space after leaving Vancouver due to its unwelcoming sense of classism. Though he never felt comfortable working in a coffee shop in BC, he knew if he were to have one of his own, it would have to adopt the values that occupy such a huge part of his life. A place devoted to radical leftist politics, revolution, ending capitalism, improving the world's economic system that benefits everyone and not just elites, and most importantly, sparking conversations that will help implement these ideas. Other than delicious coffee, which Gabriel is most definitely an expert in, the shop has a rich selection of progressive political books that he's selling at wholesale prices. Highly recommend paying a visit to Gabriel at 190 Jarvis Street, if not for great coffee, for even greater conversation. So the anti-capitalist cafe where he sells coffee and merch, he sells it to paying customers. I don't know, does he not see the hypocrisy here? He's benefiting from the free market system, from the capitalist system. It went out of business after one year, which is very surprising, who would have thought? But don't, don't cry yet. They are returning, so let me read this to you. About Us, The Anarchist is an anti-capitalist cafe, shop, and community space founded in March 2022. We exist to support and promote radical, intersectional, leftist, political, and economic theory and action. Um, I acknowledge that the anarchist sits on the rightful homeland of many indigenous peoples and nations, stolen and under the occupation of a white supremacist state. He also has a shop. In addition to the usual food and drinks, I carry a selection of radical books, art, stickers, pins, buttons, keychains, jewelry, clothing, tote bags, and hopefully much more in the future. Painfully aware of the danger of commodifying radical politics, I try to work with small, relatively ethical, it's all relative in capitalism, supplier creators, keeping prices as low as possible, and that's why he's selling $7 lattes, right? And focusing on getting radical ideas and messages into the hands of anyone who wants them. Oh, after you look at the cold brews and the lattes, he also has drip coffee which is pay what you can you know what this reminds me of when you would go trick-or-treating with a group of kids right and they would have the bowl of candy and there's a sign and it says take one and then what would the kids do every single time they take like a handful right so of course he's gonna lose money if you have pay what you can because no one's gonna pay oh my goodness reproductive justice for all genders this tote bag i need this tote bag immediately um, and then at the bottom, actually, of this photo, it says community watch area, police not welcome. Okay, God forbid anybody wants to steal anything from your store, who are you, what's gonna happen? Not a fan of law and order, I see, okay. There's a frequently asked questions section here. Oh good, another business owned by a rich white guy. I am a white cisgender queer man. When I used to daydream about opening my own cafe, but you're an anti-capitalist and your dream is to open up your own business? Okay. Also, I see that you're white and cisgender. I'm very sorry about that, by the way, but at least he's queer. So he does have some redeeming qualities. There are some oppression points there that he can collect, but that won't be enough. For, for the crowd that he's trying to um, appeal to, mm -mm. I also feel that like the world doesn't need more things owned by people at my particular intersection of privileges. However, this opportunity was offered to me and I see it as an opportunity to use my privileged position to undermine the systems that put me there. The best thing I think I can do is hire people who aren't white, cisgender, heterosexual men, make them equal owners, and follow their lead in making the place less white male-centered than the industry standard. Thank you, you white savior, for uh, just expressing your racism that you will not be hiring white people, specifically white men. At this point, just put a sign up on your cafe, no whites allowed. The ultimate goal here is to have this cafe owned by an anarchist who's a white male saying he's not going to hire white people. But how can you be anti-capitalist if you sell things? LOL, well, I can't argue with that. 
saying you're an anti-capitalist, selling your overpriced coffee and merchandise. Here are some stickers, um, ACAB, Capitalism Kills. Right, we have too many cops. At a time when places in America here, like LA and New York, which is just riddled with people who are pushing uh, innocent civilians onto train tracks and there's uh, assaults and murders, we need less cops. We need to defund the police. That's the solution. Man is charged with attempted murder after a violent subway assault. There's a pig on it, um, eat the rich, compost the rich, be gay, do crime. There hasn't been a society that has existed long-term in a state of pure anarchy or communism for that matter, but we'll talk about that later on, but he's an anarchist, right? So yeah, because eventually there will come a time when there's a need for organization in the community. And again, law and order. Support our tiny business is constantly struggling. I wonder why. The cowards at Target have sided with Christian fascists and removed their pride products in a transparent display of support for bigotry and genocide. Not closing down thanks to a huge influx of support and a very generous donation of publicity and attention from the Christian conservatives of Texas and Florida, the anarchist will continue to operate after May 30th, promoting his goods and services, in this case, his cafe in a competitive market. This one says, huge thanks to the comrade who helped set this up. Okay, now let's move on to the communists. Has there ever been a communist country? Well, no. Most communists and anarchists would agree that full communism has never actually been achieved. Countless amounts of money has been spent brainwashing these people to not understand what those words mean. And like Pavlov's dog, we've been trained to get angry every time we hear the word. But even though it hasn't yet been achieved, it's the goal of almost every socialist to eventually create true communism. Okay, right. So the capitalists are the brainwashed ones not the communists who think that this utopia can be brought about by them alone, by the way. No one else historically has been able to do this. It has failed every single time, but they can do it. Learn about the starvation that took place, the mass murder, the lack of freedom of speech, and understand what the actual alternative to capitalism would look like. Capitalism, which by the way, is not perfect, but to look at what the alternative has been historically. A typical communist in America always seems to be a middle or upper class white man or woman. It's the people at Starbucks with blue hair sipping their lattes and complaining about how horrible capitalism is. Competing in the free market is hard. It's an inefficiency of capitalism. We have all the data showing that socialism does work. It's again, these people who have no real struggles except how they were misgendered last week, talking about how evil capitalism is. And the biggest problem in their life is that they don't live in a socialist hellhole who say that life is so hard, life is so unfair, that people with better work ethic are richer than me. I would much rather everybody be poor. At least it would be fair. At least we would all be standing in line waiting for bread in the cold. So like with my grandparents who fled the Soviet Union, have to see how Gen Z is glorifying this, having a Lenin poster in their room. With the eventual promise of communism, according to Karl Marx, who, by the way, was financially supported and his entire family was financially supported by Engels. I also recently saw this video of this woman from Maoist China who was talking about the similarities between what's happening in the US school system now. 36 years ago, I ran away from socialism. Uh, when I left China, come to this great country for freedom. Today so many Americans abandoning freedom and ran into socialism. You separate the children from the parents and you take control of the children. When, once you do that, you really hold the future of your country. And, and that's how Mao got his power. Getting rid of family values, uh, re-education, censorship, it's truly frightening when you take a look at the similarities. And teens in high school especially need to be educated on what happened in places like the Soviet Union. They should read some Shalamov and the Kalima tales was sent to the Gulag himself or Solzhenitsyn and his experience in the Gulag. They should read about this because otherwise then now we have all these people who actually live through it and they have to watch these ignorant Westerners glorify communism and then selling commie merch with Lenin's face on it. Like back in the Soviet Union, when you know they, there was no freedom of religion, they would start burning down churches and it was all about Lenin and people sung songs about him and practically worship the guy. I'm a communist, right? I literally learned about Marxism through TikTok. I hate to admit it, but- Communist, I like literally learned about Marxism on TikTok. I hate to admit it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that our DoorDash order? It's the midnight cookie bar. Months, years, decades. 
nah, nah, because we need to talk about this one right here. This is not the only character they do this with. They'll take a character, they'll have them express like all the corruption going on in the U.S. system, and then like they'll talk about like how things need to be equitable, which you know connects it to communist rhetorics. And then they'll have that character go on a tyrannical villain monologue. Like they'll be like, "Oh, they take away all our rights. The kids are shooting up schools, but I can fix this. If only I was the ruler." And it's literally just them trying to tie communism to dictatorship and muddle people's understanding of that. Because that's what happens. Because people can become greedy and power hungry by nature. Unfortunately, that's what ends up happening. I know these people are young. I know maybe they don't have anyone to talk to who experienced this or haven't opened up a history book. If you look at history, if you talk to someone who's been through this, you will understand that this just cannot be achieved. This is why I travel because I'm like, I, you know what? I'm gonna work and then I'm gonna travel because why the f would I lock myself into a job for the rest of my life? There is no way that you're gonna tell me I'm gonna work my whole life. I'm gonna sit da -da 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 behind a desk and work nine to five each day of my life until retirement. There is no way that is what life is about. I will not be put in that box. I'm sorry. <laughs> A little bit extra. Oh, little boogie. I wanna have fun. I wanna have fun. I don't wanna work. I know I'm a doctor and I know like patients need me or whatever, but I just wanna have fun. Like I just wanna travel. I know I'm a pilot. I know I'm supposed to get people from one place to another, but I was just meant to have a good time. Tuniadit, <laughs> by the way, the person who doesn't work. So she's a tuniadit. <laughs> see the world like I genuinely need to see the world and experience life and I'm young and I'm lucky that I have that privilege of not having too many responsibilities not having any little fucking rats running around you know what I mean but like Jesus Christ what if everyone just wants to travel and have fun okay so what then society will collapse you're not the only one who just wants to chill and do nothing all day there are plenty of people like that okay and and society cannot go on if everybody just gave into that urge and laid on the couch all day long in the soviet union again there was a slogan those who don't work don't eat or sent to the gulag so you wouldn't be living it up you would be in the gulag working you'd be working at a uranium mine if that's what they wanted you to do you wouldn't have these fancy you know in america there some of the prisons you get hot meals you have like a tv you can get uh, exercise time in the gulag, you would work till you die, or in just horrible conditions, if you were lucky to survive those. Who is making you learn about Marxism? Are you taking f Marxism 101? Because, like, I took economics, and Marx was, like, an economist. And, like, I, I took an elective called the History of Economics, where I had to learn Marx's name and the basics of the surplus value theory and surplus value of labor. That's it. Tell me, who's forcing you to learn about Marxism? Quickly. You don't have to take... Marxism 101 to be taught this, teachers are teaching teens this and uh, those in college. It's not an elective. Seeing this again after the last TikTok is just great. I think it would be beneficial for them to take a trip to let's say Cuba, and see what's actually going on, or just listen to some protesters instead of these teachers trying to sell this idea of uh, glorifying communism in an American classroom. Do you know what Cubans are protesting? I actually have not kept up with the Cuba crisis right now. Oh uh, no. I do not know. Do you? Something about communism. I actually don't know. Do you think that socialism or communism could take hold of America, or do you think it's incompatible with what America stands for? Oh, I could only hope. No, I think I'd be open to it. Kind of an AOC fan. Acting as if capitalism only has this problem with exploitation, this would never happen under a socialist society or communist society. Not like they were literally sent to the gulag and then worked to death if they said anything the government didn't like. What's better, capitalism or socialism? I would say socialism, personally. Socialism. The equal distribution of wealth. Capitalism requires people to be exploited. Yeah, it's a good idea to give the government so much power that hypothetically they could provide you with everything you need. Uh, let's forget about corruption, that doesn't happen, right? But then they have that power to also take away anything they want from you at any given time for any reason. All I want to tell them, fly to Cuba, stay there. If you want to feel what communism, socialism, what is, what is it? Listen to us, guys. Communism sounds beautiful in theory, but it can never be taken to practice. Understand that communism kills. They take everything. They teach you. They tell you what to think, what to feel. They even control what music you listen to. Right now in Cuba, after 62 years of communism, kids are getting shot in the streets just for chanting freedom. They have these neo-Marxists 
type of indoctrination going on. I went through the college system here in the United States, and it's just obvious that that's what's happening. Or Venezuela. I think my experience should scare Americans because I used to have a middle-class family life like most of the people watching did and do. And we went from having cars, from having a home, from going to school every day, to not having electricity, to me having to line up for food, to the government telling me which day of the week I could go to the grocery store. That is what socialism did to Venezuela. We really prove that socialism wins. <laughs> across this city. These people claim that they want to turn America into Denmark, but then they meet with Venezuela's dictator, not with the Danish prime minister. Just having my regular meltdown and realizing I'm never going to escape capitalism and I'm just going to be a cog in the machine of productivity for my whole life, so. I have to be productive. I have to work. Life isn't all about having fun and traveling and doing whatever I want at any given moment. This is so sad. These people here are reading the Communist Manifesto as like a bedtime story, as like a fairy tale, thinking it'll bring about equality, social justice, eliminate worker exploitation, but it's precisely that. It's just a fantasy. It doesn't work. In the Soviet Union, people would actually try to have these underground networks where they would make better products for money, right? Better goods, like better shoes and things like that. And what happened if they were caught? They were sent to the gulag. I love the comment here. Bro, I lived in post-communist country. Communism's the worst thing that happened to us. It was a time of control, starvation, and trauma, it doesn't work. I'm not a communist, but I'm a socialist, I'm pretty sure. Our reply was, that's cool. Um, okay. <laughs> Do you see? One side has experience or know someone that went through this or has read about what has happened in these cases. The other just likes to identify as a communist because that's a trendy thing to do. It blows my mind that people coming from other countries are more American than the Americans here. As a Cuban, I approve of this message. That wasn't real socialism. Uh, I cannot stand liberals telling socialist country refugees that they're the ones who don't know what they're talking about. Exactly. My favorite line is, but this is different. No, it's not. We already know what happens. The elites end up taking control of everything, jailing their political opponents, human rights abuses, lack of individual freedom. But now this generation loves to mock the victims of communism, ignoring the fact that these societies with centralized control of the resources weren't able to provide for the basic needs of the population, the food shortages. No, next time it'll work next time because you'll be able to do it, right? And that's all for today's video, guys. Please let me know what you think and remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Stop.